Hey guys, it's Sebastian here from Noble Frugal Studio. I'm here to showcase a super simple, easy to use video editor that is designed to be the wheels under your entire workflow, whatever it may be. And its name is, drum roll please, Demo Creator by Wondershare. This video you're watching right now is sponsored by Wondershare, and they asked me to show off some of the features of their new video editing software to you guys. They also want to offer you Discord members a 7 day free trial of Demo Creator, which will allow you to use all the software's features without a watermark. Otherwise, the software costs $60 to buy once, or you can pay $30 annually. Honestly, I'd probably just buy it once, but it's up to you which plan you may go for. So there are two main features of the Demo Creator software, screen recording and video editing. I'm going to start with the screen recording features to show you how to record video with Demo Creator and then I'll go on introducing the video editor itself using the video we recorded. Towards the end, I'm going to splice together some clips and show you how an animator like me would use this straightforward and simplified video editor. So when you open Demo Creator, you're going to be greeted with a window that looks like this small window right here. And since we're going to start with recording, I'm going to hit new recording. The first time you guys open the capture software, it's going to get, run you through a few of the shortcut keys you can use, including control shift D to toggle screen drawing on and off. Before we get into anything that we see here, like this hot bar we see at the top with all these tools, we're going to adjust our settings. We're going to come down to the demo creator window and hit this little gear. You always want to do this for every recording software that you use. This is a, sort of a general rule. You want to make sure that your settings are all correct before you start recording. So my screen size and FPS is, looks really good. Audio is my Blue Yetis connected. I don't want my computer audio to capture right now, so we're going to have it on Don't Capture. Currently, I don't have a camera, so I'm going to hit Don't Capture from this drop-down menu. And for advanced, I have the directory I want this video to go through. Then we hit Capture to get back. So make sure that you, all your settings are all set before you start recording. Very, very important, guys. I've been doing this a long time. You can trust me on that one. Okay, next we want to select an area that we can record. So I'm going to drag this window to where I want it to record. Let's see, just I don't really want it to get the top of this window bar. Let's maybe just get it to around here and we can make this hot bar visible. Making sure that we have screen drawing tool toggled, I'm going to hit record. Now it's going to do a countdown and it shows us the hotkeys to start and stop the recording. So now we're recording. What you notice is that you can pause the recording right here. There's a little spotlight thing. I'm going to go back to cursor. You can click pause to pause the recording and you can hit play to resume it. You can also add a marker during your recording. So when you go back in editing, you'll see that you added a marker here. Add another one to see the end of that phrase I just made. Next, you can click this to delete your recording and then re-record it. Moving on to this hot bar, we have the spotlight tool, which can highlight anything that you want your audience to focus on. Like say I wanted to point out Frugal's neck joint, I could use the spotlight effect to point this out to my audience. If you want to stop using any of these tools, you just click back on the cursor tool and you'll have regular control again. Next, we have the pen tool, which you can use to circle anything live and you can just hit control Z to undo it. But if you have a lot of stuff drawn, like say I wanted to demonstrate how to draw my main character, Pi from Castle Dark, and it's uh, there's a lot of strokes there, I can just hit the brush here to clear everything. We also have a highlighter, which is nice. It's transparent, so if I wanted to highlight something where it says, like it says, no styles here, that's pretty easy as well. You can sort of highlight that. We have text, so you can put text in case you don't want to use your mic. You can just sort of type this in. This is frugal we can click away from that and this is noble perfect next we have the circle tool which is nice for circling things on the fly without having to draw it if i want to point out frugal's neck joint i can do that maybe if i want to point out his um hip swivel that i can do that as well very easy we also have a square which is i guess is better for selecting boxes <laughs> we have an arrow tool which i actually like a lot say if i want to to pause this animation and pay attention to a certain um, tangent in my art right here. I can point out certain lines and discuss the relationship between different lines. I'm going to hit clear. And finally, we have the line tool. We can put our characters in a box. 
All right, so everything here is pretty simple and straightforward, and it's supposed to be. That's what Demo Creator is created to do. It's created to be very easy to use and simple to understand. Unlike the software I use, DaVinci Resolve is made to be capable. This is more for you, you beginners out there who don't need all the features of a very complicated video editor. So I'm gonna hit stop recording on here, and then it's gonna take us to the Demo Creator editor automatically. It'll import the clip that we just recorded into the video editor without us having to do anything. So once you stop the recording, it'll input the clip that you put in there right into the video editor so you can get to work. So I'm gonna go down the list of the features of this video editor and show you guys everything that it's capable of. So first we're gonna go to file. I'm actually gonna click on my source and drag down its size a little bit and re reframe it to the middle. It also has these automatic snapping frame guides that will snap your video to where you want it to be. So I'm just gonna make this a little wider, put it back in the middle so that these bezels are equal. So we have this black bar around our video now, but if we wanted to change the background of our video, all we have to do is go to file, project settings, background color, and select white. We hit okay and then it turns white, which is great. And actually, if we pay attention to this, we can actually set the video resolution for our project right here. So I'm gonna set mine to 1080p, full HD. Frame rate's at 30 FPS, that's fine. And the playback resolution is set to full. Now, if, you are, if you're on a lower end PC, you might wanna set this to maybe half or even 1 16th, depending on how strong your PC is. But setting it lower than full will make playback a little faster for you guys on a lower end PC. So right now we have our media folder where you can click and import media, say if you wanna add music, you wanna add pictures, you can do all of that. Next, we have our title library. Now the titles in this are pre-animated and look really good, so you don't have to do a lot of work. Say I wanted to open my video by saying, Noble Frugal Studio Animation Tutorial. All I gotta do is drag this title right here, I can add it to the beginning of the video, and then I can, let's see, so it opens like that, it's already animated. Double click on the title, I'm just going to put Animation Tutorial. I'm gonna double click Demo Creator and I'm gonna put Noble Frugal Studio. Perfect. Now I'm going to click this and change the font to something that I like. That's kind of cool. Let's change Animation Tutorial. All right, that looks good. But if you don't like that, say you want a whole page to open up your video, we can delete that by clicking it and selecting Delete. And we can have one of these openers here. I'm actually gonna try this one because I haven't tried it yet. Open tunes and tutorial. Might, might have to scale it down just a tad. There we go. <laughs> so it can fit. Let's increase the size of the text. We'll get a font that we like. There we go. Like that. All right, now when we open our video, this is what it looks like. Okay, moving on, we have the text box features. We can put some clip art on our video as well. I'm gonna add to the frame of the playhead. Say we wanted to point something out afterwards that we didn't point out during the video. Like, hey, what is this? What is this down here? This is the timeline or the X sheet. We can put that in and we can adjust the timing that it has. So we can click on it and we can click and drag to adjust the timing of where it appears. So that's pretty cool. We have this thing called sketch curved arrow and I'm gonna drag it to the playhead. It's an animated arrow that will draw itself. So let's say I wanted to point out how do you edit how you edit the rooms in open tunes I just point them out point our my viewers up to here then it'll draw in also if you said something and you don't want your viewers to listen to what you just said you can put a giant x on the screen if that's the way you want to do that personally i would just take it out but hey you can do it in style here <laughs> also in annotations you can just have a regular text annotation which you actually can edit you can just put words like words like that Next up, you can add emojis to your video. Um, <laughs> maybe if you were really proud of the animation that you made, you can applaud yourself. They're all animated, which look pretty cool. I don't know if I'd use these, but hey, maybe maybe they're up. To, it's up to you, man. Maybe that's your style. <laughs> this also comes preloaded with some cool transitions. I'm gonna show you guys just my favorite ones. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut my video here, so I'm gonna select both of these, hit Control B, and say I wanna cut to maybe the end towards the end of this tutorial. One of my favorite transitions is this orb transition. You just place it on the video and it just sort of does that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, it may be a little distracting, but <laughs> hey, 
And another one I like is also this box turn one, which we can just drag it over the orb one if we don't like it. Next up we have the effects. So we have pan and zoom, which I'm gonna show you first. And I really I really like the way this works because it's very simple and I think it'll be very clear for, for you guys who haven't used a video editor before. So I'm gonna drag the pan and zoom on the video. And so this blue track is the video, this green track is the audio. It's the same thing in Resolve. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit with this slider right here. So it automatically zooms in to the lower right, but if you wanna customize it, just double click the arrow and this window will come up. And so now we can edit the start and the end positions of this pan and zoom. So say I want it to start here, but what if I wanna zoom in on the thing that says this is noble? I can do that. And I can just I can adjust the timing as well by dragging this arrow longer or shorter. So I'm just wanted like something like that. <laughs> and then if I want to reset it, I can just go back to pan and zoom, put another one. Let's say and then double click it. I want the end to be the full screen and I want the start to be the start is already where we last had it, which is nice. So here's what happens when you play the whole thing. Perfect. If you have an effect that has a green screen over it and you want to add it on top of your video, you can do that as well. So let's import an effect I have. Let's see. So I have this subscribe animation that I want to take the green screen out of. This is just Coco telling y'all to subscribe. Let's drag the green screen effect on there. And there we go. We can actually edit it right here. As you can see, it has the effect pulled up. It's called chroma key and we can edit the offset. So we can edit the, basically the threshold of how much we want to be taken away. Let's see, tolerance. Let's, so we can just edit this until we, we feel comfortable. Let's see how that looks. Awesome. We also have the mosaic effect which you drag on top of the video. You can drag around to say you want to blur anything out. Like say I didn't want people to see my recording box, then I would just blur that out, which is very useful. I do it a lot in Resolve. It's more complicated in Resolve, but this is nice to have just on the go. So I just added some music to my project and I want to drag it onto, onto the timeline and have it fade in as the video starts. Once the waveform loads, all we have to do is right click, hit edit audio, and then we'll see this little purple dot appear. All we have to do is drag that and you'll see this, this ramp up here where that is where our audio will start to fade in. So it's at zero here and it goes up to its original, it goes up to the volume that you want it to. You can do the same for the other side of the audio if you want it to fade out. Take this purple dot and drag it to whatever point you want your audio to start fading out. One thing that I think that'll make this software really good for teaching is that you can actually add effects to your cursor. And it's not like it detects the cursor. It knows where the cursor is all the time. The effects are really well programmed. So say we wanted to spotlight the cursor for the entire video so our audience knows where the cursor is at all times. We can drag this effect called cursor highlight onto our video. Let's put it on this one. And then ah, boom, you automatically you'll see the cursor and it follows the cursor the entire time, which is really, really nice. So say we don't want that effect. We can just come over here to effects the cursor effects and we can hit X. Say we want the, per the cursor magnifying glass. If I have used any of these cursor effects, it'll probably th be this one because um, I really like the way that this magnifies what's around the cursor. So the cursor isn't the only thing that we're focusing on. However, what is around the cursor you can see clearly since, you know, some softwares have very small windows and that way your audience can focus on what exactly you're doing and where, and they can see where you are. You also have some templates here. So if you want to add a little bit of um, winter to your video, you can add this animated snowflake bobbing from left to right if you want to as well. That pretty much wraps it up for the core features guys. Head over to my discord, get the free trial and try this out for yourself. I think that a lot of you guys who are making tutorials are really going to enjoy this software. But for those of you who are just looking for a software to compile and splice together your animated clips, this part of the video is for you, so stay tuned. Okay, I just imported some scenes from the Castle Dark storyboard into the media folder. Now I'm gonna go to File, go to Project Settings. Wanna make sure that my project is a 1080p video that's playing at 24 FPS since that's what the storyboard was animated at. I'm gonna keep the background color black. So I'm gonna hit OK. 
Then I'm going to drag all of these clips into the timeline, just like that, one after the other. So we have the opening scene, part one, part two, and then part three. As I'm scrubbing through this animation, I see things that I want to fix. Now say I want to tell my storyboard artist, if I wasn't the storyboard artist, through a presentation that they have to fix this issue where this room inside the castle has this gray space in the middle. I can head over to annotations, go to text, drag it right there. I can say fix this. Let's make the text black so we can see it better. Go to border. Put it there. Let's add an animated arrow as well. Make sure that they know what we're talking about. And to top it all off, we're gonna add a dialogue box under. So let's make sure the text is on top. How about this one? So we can use that annotation arrow, or if we wanted to get rid of the arrow, we can just use a dialogue box, preferably one without text in it. <laughs> you can use that one with text in it, or you can make your own like I'm doing. Place that right here. Make sure that our text aligns up, and we're good. You can tell the animator to, or the storyboard artist to fix this. Next up, we see something funny that we like, Pi escaping the sight of this chef. Maybe we wanna add a little emoji on there. A little hand clap. Good job on this scene. Drag this to the side right here. So all this isn't really necessary, but um, it can be good if you're talking, communicating back and forth with a colleague. Of course, nowadays you can also just share your screen and point these things out as well. But besides all this, you can really just splice together your animated clips. And for some of you, that's really all you need. So after you have all your animated clips together and you're pretty much ready to compile this all as one video and upload it somewhere, you're gonna go to export and create video. And here's where you edit your final video settings. Want the format to be MP4, that's fine. Name, it's Castle Dark Story Board. You can set the destination, which will by default be in the Demo Creator Exported Files folder. Here we can set some more complicated video settings. Um, I want to touch the bitrate if you don't know if you don't really know what it is. Um, all you really have to worry about is resolution and the FPS. Say Castle Dark and the storyboard are animated at 24 FPS, so I want to keep that to 24. And usually things will be animated at 24 FPS. If you don't know what any of this stuff is about audio, then I wouldn't touch it. Um, I'm just going to set this to 4800 hertz. And the bitrate will just set it higher for, for fun. Then we just hit export and we're set. Then it'll start at converting our video and exporting it. All right, once it's done, we can hit open folder and it'll automatically locate the folder that it rendered to. And we can just double click the file and it'll preview it for us. Here's the preview. All right, looks good, but if we also if we go to export again, we hit create video, you notice that you can sign in with a YouTube account and upload it straight to YouTube from Demo Creator, which is kind of cool. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much to Demo Creator for sponsoring this video. Be sure to hop on my Discord to get the seven day free trial of this so you can try it out on your own animations. Feel free to leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below and tell me whether you're gonna invest in the software, what you wanna use it for, or if you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments. If you didn't notice already, this entire video that you've been watching is made using Demo Creator. So if you wanna try it for yourself, follow the free download link in the description. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Peace.